And then we've got a very last minute Easter make here. We've got a little dinosaur here. Now he's hiding a treasure in there. We have a cream egg. It could be any sort of chocolate egg, approximately that size. So he's made part amigurumi, part rose. So it's a little bit of a mix up in style there. This is all done in double crochet, but then there's sort of a couple of different stitches involved in that. But otherwise he's quite simple to make. He's done in a double knit yarn. I have chosen a green and an orange. You can choose whichever you want. I have a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. I have a couple of little notions here. I have some little beads that I've done for his eyes, but please be aware of the age group you're doing it for because you may need to embroider the eyes if it's for a smaller child, perhaps. I have my stitch marker, my needles, and my usual scissors. So we're gonna get straight into it. So I'm gonna move that all to one side. Now I've tried this uh, video a couple of times and I realized my pattern was wrong, so I've had to start again. But I think we've got it all sorted now. Just drop my yarn into a tin because otherwise it rolls, it's quite handy having this tin, otherwise it rolls all over the floor. So in we go. We're going to start with our slip knot because the first part is very amigurumi. In fact, we will take the egg out. You can see what he looks like flat then. I mean, if you wanted to, you could actually just stuff him and sew him up if you wanted to as well afterwards. So here we go. Starting with the slip knot, as always for my amigurumi, and then we're going to start with two chain. So we've got one and two, and into that first chain, I'm going to be doing six double crochets. Remembering I'm working on UK terms, so we have one, two, three, four, five and six. I'm not going to tighten it because the next round is just one in each and it's sometimes a bit tricky to hold. So here we go, just one double crochet into each. The first one's always awkward. Here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, just one more, and number six. Now, as you can see, it's already starting to kill, which gets a little bit annoying. So I'm going to tighten this now, but then I'm going to sort of push it over the end of my finger. Just push it over tight so you can sort of see your stitches a little bit easier because it's quite difficult to get into them if you leave them inside out. We're now going to do an increase round. We're going to do two in one, one in the next. So two double crochets in the first stitch, one double crochet in the second. It will give us a three increase, so we'll end up with nine stitches. So here we go. We've got one. So there's two in that one, one in that one, that's our first set. Again, two double crochets in this stitch, one double crochet in the next one. We're going to do that one more time. Two double crochets in this one, one double crochet in the next one. So that's giving us nine, you can start to see. So I'm just going to push it over my finger again, just to make sure. Let's move those up a little bit, make me a little bit more central. The cream egg's not rolling because I've used it so many times it started to melt. So it's gone a bit flat, never mind. I'm sure it'll still taste the same. So we're going to actually do just one double crochet into each double crochet now. So just nine stitches for this round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. It's getting a little bit easier to hold now, so it'll make it a little bit easier. We have another increase round. This time it's very similar to the other one, but we're going to do two double crochets in this one and then one double crochet in each of the next two afterwards. So here we go. And that's going to be three times as well. So we have two in that one. And then we have a one and a one. That's our first set. We've got two more sets to do. We have a two. We have a one. We have a one. Last one. We have a two. We have a one. It's getting much easier to hold now. And a one. So that's giving us our little shape. You can see the point of the tail coming properly now. We've got another increase round. That has now given us 12 stitches. We're next jumping up to 15 stitches. And this time it's going to be two in the first one. And then one, two and three. Single ones. I shouldn't use the term single. Should I have double crochets? Right, here we go. We have two double crochets in that one. And then we have a one. A one. And a one that's set number one we've got to do that twice more so we have two in this one and then we have a one a one and a one one more time two 
And then we have a one, a one, and a one. So we're getting a little bit wider now. So we have 15 stitches. We're going to just do a double crochet round now. So just one double crochet into each of the 15. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Just five more. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15. Now this is where you could have used the stitch marker if you wanted to. I've got a little one so it doesn't take up much space but it's entirely up to you whether you think that's necessary. If it's nice and quiet you can just count but sometimes it is handy if you've got other distractions. We have one more increase, our last increase and again it'll be for three times. We're going to have two in the first one and then one in each of the next four. This should give us 18 stitches. So we have two and then a one, a one, a one, and a one. That's our first set. We're going to do that again. So we have two stitches in the first one. And then we have a one, a one, a one, and a one. So we've got four times there. So one more set, two, and then one in each of the next four. One, two, three and four so I'm just going to stop there a second because this could depend on your tension quite a lot so what I did was I was making the pattern I got to this point and I thought oh let's have a look I've put the pointy end of the egg towards the tail and I'm like yeah that looks like that would be okay now if yours is something rather large now maybe that last row wasn't needed or if you want a slightly shorter tail you can do it that way but if it's really tight you may need to add the odd stitch in it comes down to different tensions and different yarns because as much as this is a yarn I use quite frequently it's a style craft yarn this green I don't know it's weird I didn't notice it until obviously I did this uh, it feels thicker than the others but you can get that with different dies it does happen right we now have our last just a double crochet round so we have 18 stitches i'm not going to bother putting the stitch marker in i'm just going to count it so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten we've got eight more to go we're nearly there though we have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. So there we are. So now that is the end of the amigurumi bit until we get to the head really or as we just finish off his body. Because we're now going to work into rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one chain and I'm going to turn my work. It's going to feel a bit weird working this way and I'm going to be working along all the way around to here till I get to where that stitch starts. Just double crochets. So here we go. So just double crochets. After this first row, I've got to start saying rows now, not rounds, um, you will see where it's going and you go, oh, yeah, that's OK. Now, if you are skipping here because you know what you're doing, I'm actually doing eight rows. So this is our first of the eight. So I've got my pen and paper ready. So I always forget what row I'm on, so I do have to mark it down. Don't go far without a pen and paper. We almost round for that. Attempting to join, and you mustn't join. Oh, I caught the stitch there. Yep, so I move that out of the way because it's very irritating. So I've got one more stitch, can you see? But I'm not going to join. I'm going to chain and I'm going to turn it and I'm going to go along that row again. First off, I'm going to mark how many I've done. That was my first one of the eight. In fact, I'm going to tuck this in as well because that is getting in the way. Obviously, that will want fastening in at the end there. So it's not in my way now. So just one double crochet in each of those. Now, I say I have done eight rows. Again, you will need to check across your egg just in case sort of perhaps your stitching is a little bit looser or a little bit tighter or your yarn is slightly different. You may need to adjust maybe a row or two. It doesn't really make a huge difference because the egg will slot in anyway. Oh, 
almost there now watch this one now I've done that it makes you think that that's the last stitch it's not because when you did the chain it needs to go in there so sometimes it's a bit tricky to get into so we might need to fight for it a little bit there we go because otherwise if you don't get that very last stitch it's going to get shorter and shorter as you go around so chain keep that chain nice and loose it makes it easier not too loose but sort of nice and flexible and then off we go we mark it down that's why I look forget that to account because I don't write it down either even though I've got pen and paper so this is row three to be honest when you get past the body the eight rows the rest is quite quick his head is sewn on separately and it is a little amigurumi style head I say he did look like a little seal when I first did him so I still look quite cute and I thought we could do it in grey you've got a little seal but I don't know why you do a little seal for Easter although why would you do a dinosaur for Easter I've done a dinosaur for Easter because my grandson has decided he really likes dinosaurs he can't say dinosaur yet he says dido but it's most cute right I've come to that bit again where that one felt comfortable so I thought hmm I finished I haven't there is a last stitch here now sometimes you have to fight to get in it there we are one chain and turn so that's three rows now you see the shape coming you can see how the stitching's different as well we've gone from the amigurumi with this and then the stitching changes quite considerably there as well off we go so this is row four yep four obviously everybody's Easter is going to be a little bit quiet this year because uh, of various well the main situation that's hitting across the world hope you're keeping safe and well my stomach's just rumbled it's because I've not had any breakfast yet so I wanted to get this done quickly as I said because we're uh, getting very close to Easter so there's the one that feels like it's right and there's the one that's hard work <laughs> There are different ways of doing it, but hopefully that will work for you. There's number four. So chain up and turn and into the next stitch. So we're halfway now. Well, as soon as we've done this one, we're over halfway. I'm not going to measure across my egg yet. If you're not sure or you feel it's sort of getting a bit long or it doesn't feel big enough, keep getting the egg and checking the length. Thank you. I had intended on getting this done earlier in the week, but uh, everything's been determined to stop me this way. Right, there's the one that feels right, and there's the one that is a pain. I don't actually like doing. Um, well, I'm going to have to start being a bit looser on my crochet. It would make that bit a lot easier. I don't actually like working in rows. It's definitely not my favourite thing, but uh, sometimes it's necessary, so we have to do it. Off we go. This is number six. So there's only two, six, so yeah, it's two more. I can't count. Just two more after this one. It's looking about right, looking at it compared with the other one. There was a few errors in my first little chat, which I actually altered after the fact. So this one should actually fit better than he did. Almost there. And one more. six we've got our last two can you see how it's coming obviously this is the space now that is occurring ready to pop the egg in i know i got to this point last time and i'm, I'm terrible every time i look at i look at oh it could be a hat i actually thought it could be quite a cute little hat with a little turn back and then sort of fasten it that way i don't know i'm not supposed to be doing a hat i'm doing a dinosaur so let's concentrate chain up and turn And row number seven. I still keep wanting to say round. So my row keeps coming out funny when I say it. I say if I'm going a little bit too fast at this point, please slow me down in the settings 
or if you're wanting to go ahead of me as I said I've got eight rows so you've probably already done that if you're comfortable with that or you could just pause me and do the eight and come back to it at the end So this was number seven, one more stitch, need to keep it even. Last one, into the stitch. So I've not gone, in fact, let me just point that out, thinking about it. I've not gone directly below into that one, I've gone into the next one. It can make a difference, sometimes you do have to go below. So make sure when you're reading a pattern, whether it says the stitch directly below or whether it says the next stitch, you do have to watch that because it can make a difference to your edging, it can make your edgings very unlevel if you're not careful. This is our last one, we've got a couple more stitches. We're going to join it then, because we're on the right side now. So we're on the outer side as we're crocheting, remember we keep alternating don't we? So we're now on the outer side which is where I want it to be. So we have that one last stitch. And now I'm going to bring round the other side. So we've got the two sides. And I'm going to join. Now make sure this join is quite tight because I noticed when I did one before it was a little bit loose. So double crochet it together. So we've got a relatively tight space there. We're now going to be decreasing. Now we want to sort of get down so it sort of shapes around this part. So all I'm doing is I'm back to the amigurumi and I'm going to just do two double crochets together until it's closed or almost closed. Sometimes that last bit is really hard to get into and sometimes you might need to sort of stitch it up. So here we go. So one, two, we pull through all three. Remember you go in as a double crochet, you pull it through, you don't complete the stitch. You go into the next one, we have three, you pull it through all three. And you're going to do that all the way around. So it's just two double crochets together till it starts to get smaller and smaller. Doesn't matter which round you're on, just keep going until you've got to the size you want. There we go. Now we're going across this bit now so it feels a little bit weird where we joined. Keep it nice and tight, it can get very easily loose when you do decreases. Now, can you see how I've flattened it now? Rather than trying to get my finger in there, I've sort of flattened it, but I'll just make sure the front is higher than the back so I can get in, so I'm not catching the other side. I keep moving it around. It looks like a little slug at the moment. And I think one more, and then that last tiny bit of a hole where we'll stitch up because it does make it very difficult to get in at a certain point. So, scissors snip. We have a body. And as I say, he looks like a little slug or a something. I'm not quite sure. So let's see. With crochet, it stretches. It's yarn after all. So don't worry if that looks a little bit too small. It does stretch in because it's better that way than too large because you want to make sure it comes around. So you've got to be a little bit tighter. So we can see... We have a little dino's body there. So onto his head next. Couldn't be any simpler the head. It's only a few rounds. And again, it's like amigurumi style. If you can manage the tail, you can definitely manage the head. So slip knot on, two chain. Six double crochets into the first chain. We have one, two, three, Four, five and six. Now we're going back to how we usually do it. So I'm going to tighten it now. And we're going to do two double crochets into each of those to give us 12 stitches. So the first stitch, we have one. So there's two stitches in the first one, two stitches in the second one, and so on and so forth. So this is our third one. Fourth, fifth, that's the yarn making that funny noise in the tin, and the sixth. So we now have 12 stitches. 
tighten up again if you need to and all we're going to do now is three rounds of those 12 so again you could stitch marker but i don't really think it's necessary for this bit so let's have a look we need 12 stitches so it's two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve that's our first round so you can see it's starting to shape so push it round to the right way because that's where his little face is going to be always make sure that's nice and tight there because obviously if you're um, painting I was going to say then if you're sewing on details you need to be able to sort of have a nice flat canvas for it see I'm still referring to painting terms there we go that's two three this is our second time four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve just one more round and we have finished his head and we'll finish his body all we've got to do is a little spine for him so one two three four five six Oh, nearly missed it. Make sure you're picking up those both parts. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and last one. I'm going to do a slip stitch to finish just because that's my preference. You don't have to. Fasten it off. Now, I didn't really use stuffing for his head. I just shoved all the ends in that was required, and then if I needed a bit more yarn, I popped it in. But as you can see, we now have our little head. So there's his little head. So let's have a look at the spine first before we actually go on to uh, stitching him up. Now I've just got a little bit of orange here. Again, any colour that you would rather use. Now it's a case of making 20 chain, but again, this will depend on your chain. What I would suggest you do is you do the 20 chain and then you measure it along. So if you're doing it yourself, perhaps do, sewing the head on first would be a good idea. But here we go. One, two, three four five six seven eight nine and ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen and twenty i'm going to measure on my old little guy make sure so what i wanted to do i wanted it from his tail to the top of his head so 20 works about right for me but you don't want to do it and you sort of end up with too much so you might want a bit less or if you only want it on his back you can decide because it won't make any difference to the actual stitching what length you do now as far as this next bit is concerned we're going to just i'm just reading what i'm doing we're just going to chain down the one side to create this can you see can you see how there's like a little little loop so basically it's a double crochet a chain a double crochet and a slip stitch involved so there's not really any other stitches slip stitch well we've already talked about a slip stitch so it's not that bad so I'm gonna double crochet into that first one there we go double crochet I'm gonna do three chain one two and three and I'm gonna slip stitch into the next stitch so that's one we've just been in be careful because that always makes you want to go there but it's not it's this one here we're gonna do a slip stitch We're going to do three chain one two and three we're going to miss one and this time and we're going to do a slip stitch and that's the pattern you're going to follow from now on so it's three chain one two and three you're going to miss one and you're going to slip stitch into the next one we're doing a slip stitch not a double crochet because it just shows a little bit more definition you can do a double crochet if you really don't like them I know a lot of people don't. I can't say it's my favourite stitch. Right, so slip stitch, three chain, one, two, three. You see it starts to curl, so you might need to stretch it a little bit. Miss one, slip into the next stitch. Three chain, one, two, and three. Miss one, slip stitch into the next one. So all you're doing all the way along is you'll do your slip stitch, you do three chain, you will miss a stitch and you'll slip stitch into the next one. We're almost there actually and that's all you're going to do all the way along. Three chain, miss one, slip stitch. Three chain, one, two and three. Miss one and slip stitch. Hopefully we should fit one more in. 
three chain and I'm going to go in there don't worry if you're on missing because I did then and there we go that is it you could make in bigger spines if you wanted to by going back into each stitch but I think that's oh and get the right bit to fasten off that should be enough so you'll want to flatten it out a little bit because it does curl but hopefully with his head on as well that should be enough I've just made one mistake which I'm going to regret leave this bit a lot longer because I, I think I might just do it but ideally you want this to be able to sew that on rather than using a separate piece of yarn which you could but it would be easier if you don't have to so let's get this head sewn on then I'm going to stuff that bit in there Yeah, so that's like using for the stuffing you can also stuff that bit in if you want but I'm actually going to sew it in so let me get my right needle oh I can get it off the magnet these magnets are fabulous but problem being this is so strong that uh, you have a bit of a battle right so I'm just going to take it out of the egg oh I'll throw the egg about should I say because I want to just make sure that hole so is pretty closed actually so I'm quite pleased with that and I'm actually going to just push the needle through the other side because I want to sew it in from the other side I don't want to sew it in from that side and I'm just going to stitch through do another knot not really necessary I just like things to be nice and secure and just threading the yarn through like you would at any other time to get rid of the ends that will do for that so we've got his body I'm going to pop the egg back in because it's easier to position the head with the egg in that's why I said I think that's why my egg ended up melting a little bit because I kept messing about with it so we'll get rid of that end just trying to decide if I need any more stuffing in there I don't think so so threading your needle up deciding on the position of his head I think that looks about okay there so I usually hold it like that for my first stitches so it's not going to go anywhere and just picking up and I just pick up that front stitch as you know if you've seen me do it before however you prefer to sew up you just sew it up your way everybody's got a different method I'm just basically keeping my thumb there because I don't want the, the head to be in a different position I want it there it's a little bit more sat up than the other one but that's okay Nearly there, I'm just checking what time we're on. 27 minutes, you know, that's not bad. I actually thought it was going to take longer than that. Yeah, his head's definitely more sat up than the other one. Amazing what you can do with your stitching up. So if you didn't like it, you could always sort of take it off and move it. So I'm not going to actually fully finish it. I'm just going to push that through because I want to reposition that head for afterwards. But uh, so let's just move that out of the way. And I think it could do with a little bit more stuffing in it. So we don't need one of these. So I'm going to get rid of the shorter one. And again, that's just about sort of threading through where your work is. So it's always harder when there's not really any double crochets or anything to thread through because you're always worried about it coming undone. You just have to be patient and sort of try and sort of uh, get through the stitches. Just going to do a little bit more, just go on a little bit more. That will do me. So now I'm hoping I've got enough there. I think I might have actually. I think I was overly worrying about that. Again, I'm not going to stitch it all on because I'm going to be moving his head. So decide which you want, whether you want to start from the head or if you want to start from the tail. It's entirely up to you. Decide which direction you're going. I'm going to go from that way. So I'm going to start from his tail. Now I want it central. Now when you're stitching, I'll be careful because sometimes you'll end up with it over a different direction. So I'm going to hold it central first and then I'm just going to flatten it there. So I'm happy with this line is central to where I want it. And then like with any other sewing on, I'll move it down a little bit because I want it right to the end of his tail. I'm just going to stitch. And it's just really a little over stitch or whip stitch or whatever you want to call it fiddly to get going as soon as you've moved a little bit further up the body it's not so bad I'll just do a couple more to show you 
but as I say, I'm not going to finish it off because I want to reposition his head. Right. So basically, you can see how it's starting to sit up now, and it's pretty central. I'm quite pleased with that. It doesn't always work that. I have had to undo before now, so I'm quite pleased with that. So that will go all the way along his body. It's going to curve a little bit there and run up onto his head, so you can see the shape that it's doing. So that is, I think that's quite simple for that. Now, as far as the eyes are concerned, I have just used a normal sewing cotton, which has just come off of it. There's the normal sewing cotton. There we go. So I've got a normal sewing cotton. These are just little plastic beads. And when I sewed them in on him, I pulled them in slightly. So can you see? It sort of, sort of squashes his face there. It gives a little bit of facial detail. And then I just used a little bit of crochet cotton here. So it's just a fine crochet cotton to pop him a little mouth on. But again, you don't have to do the mouth. You don't have to do those facial features. You could do a straight line. Obviously, you make him your little character from there. So I'm going to leave you at that for the crochet. I will complete this little guy. And I've got to decide I might have to embroider the eyes on because this is for my grandson. And he is only 18 months old. So I'm not sure. About, I'm not happy with the beads. So I do need to work out a different method for his eyes. Apart from that, just quickly before you go, if you're in the UK here, this might be a magazine that you actually get, Simply Crochet, a lovely magazine. Um, I actually do a little bit of designing for them, and this month, what they got me to do is what they call their Hook to Hook Challenge, which is here. Ta -da! This is mine. Um, we were asked to do garlands. Mine was a flower garland. What they do is they give you the yarn, and you challenge. they challenge two of us to just make something from their brief description which is what we did so it was a wallflower was the theme so i went for this garland it looks great actually around your neck as well i mean i know they've laid it out flat but i did it so that you could actually wear it here i am me in the hat in this weather i've got a picture of me in a woolly hat i don't know but if you do get the magazine Make sure you read this little bit because if you want a chance to win some of this yarn that we used, and it is really nice, by the way, if you pop onto their Instagram, it's at hashtag hook to hook at Simply Crochet Mag. So I, I had a bit of trouble finding it, but I did find it eventually. Um, they haven't put the details up yet, but basically they'll put pictures up and people can vote. It's only for fun. It's nothing else. It's usually whatever sort of takes your fancy. You know, you might like one colour or the other. Um, basically, sort of a little vote just to see which one comes out as the sort of favourite from people and you might get a chance to win some of that yarn so I thought I'd share that and me and my woolly hat so thank you very much for watching get the magazine anyway, it's a great magazine this month it's got some really nice, um, it had an extra little thing and a great little crochet hook as well so thank you for watching, please like, subscribe and share and I hope to see you very soon, have a fabulous Easter I am hoping to get a little smart doll thing done there's all my things going um, I'm hoping to get a smart doll thing done, which is absolutely nothing to do with crochet. I've lost my cream egg. I'm not, <laughs> what am I doing with my cream egg? Oh, I don't know. I'll find it. Oh, it's inside in there. Um, but basically, I'm going to be doing this project, which is sort of a paper, I could argue it's a paper craft project, but it's a little secret and it'll be a little Easter project for you to make if you've got your smart dolls or similar size doll. It works quite well for the American girl, etc. All that sort of size. So hope to see you very soon and have a lovely Easter. Thank you. Bye.